Hey guys, yes, this question will finally be answered. What is up with Tanjiro's forehead? Is that a scar? Is it a birthmark? Wait, is it growing and changing? Like, what's going on? Well, in this video, I'll be breaking everything you need to know about Tanjiro's forehead mark, along with giving you guys a theory on what it really represents. But guys, I really have to address something that has been on my mind for some time now. A few of you lot have been complaining that I'm boring, I have no enthusiasm, and I'm pretty much sound dead all the time. Some of you lot can't even differentiate between me, Yusuf, and Adil. Adil, come over here, do you sound exactly like me? <laughs> yes, I do, because apparently we all have the same voice, we all go balls deep, <laughs> and apparently we need to activate voice change magic. Let's turn into a girl. <laughs> Why <are you> changing magic? <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> Alright, but on a serious note, guys, my wife will be joining the Anime Balls Deep team, and we're going to start a couple of new series in the future where you lot might possibly be seeing more of her. So leave some positive words of encouragement in the comment section below to show us your support. Oh my gosh, these guys took so long introducing me. Did I really have to wait through that cringy intro? But hey everyone, my name is Sam and these guys clearly don't pay me enough. But whatever, I like anime, so without further ado, let's get into the intro. You don't fuck with neck, bro. Alright, let's start with some few things that was established about Tanjiro's forehead mark early on in the series. Which is that we see Tanjiro having a unique forehead mark and then not long after it changes forms. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to label these forms as Form 1 and Form 2. Even though his scar continues to evolve, I will just focus on these two forms as my explanation will cover any evolution of Tanjiro's forehead mark. Okay, so the two forms we see is form 1 being the original form that Tanjiro has on his forehead. While this form is more pinkish and looks like a patch, and when we eventually get a flashback to see Tanjiro's father, we see a very similar pinkish patchy mark on his forehead as well. Now the second form to Tanjiro's forehead mark is the one that is a darker shade of red and flame-like. In the manga, the second form appears and stays after Tanjiro's injury against the hand demon. Now outright, it seems that the second form is just an additional injury to Tanjiro's forehead after he was slashed by the hand demon. But let's break this down properly. Does Tanjiro really gain the second form of his forehead mark due to the injury or was it due to something else? Right before Tanjiro gets injured, his forehead is shown having a vein popping out. That might mean nothing as of yet, but keep that in mind. And then as Tanjiro goes in for an attack, on page 12 he gets slashed on his forehead and knocked aside. But when looking at the new mark after the bandage is removed in chapter 10, if you analyze this mark carefully, you guys should notice that this mark is not an extension of the old mark or an injury over it. How do we know this? <laughs> well, no, it's not some balls deep magic analysis this time around. It's just simple common observation. When we look at both forms of the scar back to back, we can see that the second forehead mark doesn't have any red or previous pink coloration on the top right corner of the mark, which means the first mark, if it was an injury scar, somehow healed up or which is more likely the original mark just evolved and changed shape proving that the second form of the mark isn't an injury caused by the hand demon but an actual birthmark or something extraordinary. Also to add to this point, Tanjiro's healing ability once he has mastered full focus breath is unreal and Tanjiro sustained many battle injuries none of them leaving any scars behind so why would this one be different? It won't because it's not an injury, it's a special marking. <laughs> Move aside, Sam, the boss man's there. Now, moving forward, the next time you notice something similar to these forehead markings is in Kibutsuji's Muzan's flashback of him nearly getting killed by the samurai demon slayer. Oh <laughs> so sad. Oh, he's run out of breath. <laughs> I'm run out of breath, just like Muzan ran from this demon slayer, who, like Tanjiro, also wears a pair of Hanafuda earrings, and he also has some unique red markings on his forehead. For you guys who want to know more about this character, then make sure to watch our video on the secret behind Tanjiro's earring and what why Muzan killed his family in Demon Slayer, where I explained who this character is and his relationship to Tanjiro. But coming back to Tanjiro's forehead mark, in his journey to learn more about his relationship to his father's Dance of the Fire God breast style, he crosses paths with the previous flame pillar Shinjiro Rengoku, 
who when glanced upon Tanjiro, he instantly recognized his Hanafuda earrings and what the mark on Tanjiro's forehead represented, telling Tanjiro that he is a Breath of the Sun user. Although Shinjiro didn't mention much about the forehead mark at first, a couple of chapters later within chapter 81, Tanjiro receives a letter from Shinjiro confirming what he had said earlier in person. Shinjiro believes that Tanjiro is a chosen user of the Breath of the Sun and says that he believes this is because of Tanjiro's red birthmark on his forehead, stating it's a trait the Breath of the Sun users before him also had. Now at this point, Tanjiro for the first time gets into the history behind his forehead mark by dismissing Shinjiro's reasoning, saying that rather than a birthmark, the origin of the mark on his forehead is actually just a burn scar he got when he was younger. Tanjiro goes into detail, saying that he got the first form of the mark when he shielded his younger brother when he knocked down a burning hot brazier, and the second form was due to the injury against the hand demon in the selection exam. But as I stated earlier, <laughs> this would make no sense. So currently it seems as though Tanjiro himself doesn't actually know the real origin of his mark, but we will, so pay attention guys. Now although Tanjiro pushes aside the idea of him having a special birthmark, he does confirm that his father Tanjiro had a slight birthmark on his forehead, which again, funny enough, resembles the first form of Tanjiro's mark. So is Tanjiro right? Is it just coincidence? Is his father's birthmark and his own possible scar mark different? Now this is where we finally get into the explanation of what's going on. Tanjiro's forehead mark is in fact a birthmark unique to him, however, it can only be activated in certain conditions. The first form of the mark was activated when it was exposed to heat and when Tanjiro was risking himself to save his younger brother from harm. Once he had activated this form, it stuck to him for life. However, due to no one explaining how his birthmark works, he believed it was just a scar. In Tanjiro's father's case, it seemed that he had only activated the first form of the mark. Now, the second form of Tanjiro's mark was activated when he was in battle against the hand demon, as Tanjiro's body was pushed beyond its limits for the first time in his whole life. His heart rate went over 200 RPM. We can even see his veins protruding outside his head, which shows just how much work his body was doing. This also was Tanjiro's first major demon boss battle. Due to all of this, his forehead mark had evolved to form 2. Now so far I mentioned a couple of conditions for this mark to grow, being that you must have the will to fight in a fight or flight response, increase in body temperature, and a rise in heart rate, but the last one is more likely related to overall temperature, as an increase of heart rate will naturally heat up the body. Now all of these conditions and reasoning are later explained after the swordsmith arc in the manga, after the mist pillar Muchiro Tokito and the love pillar Mitsuri Kanjori start developing similar strange markings on their faces while fighting against the upper demon moons. This led to a meeting that was held for the pillars or Hashira hosted by the big bosses Kagaya Ubayashiki's wife, Amane Ubayashiki. Within this meeting, Amane Ubayashiki talks to the pillars about receiving reports of strange marks appearing on Kanroji and Tokido during their battles against the upper moons 4 and 5. Then she goes on to explain that during the Sengoku era, there were some swordsmen of the first breath users who were one step away from ending Muzan's life, and all had markings on them that resembled demon crests. This knowledge had been passed down, but because of a lot of the demon slayers were brooding over the marks never appearing, higher ups decided to stop sharing this information so the demon slayers can focus on their own training. And due to this, information about the marks became hazy with time, along with the fact that nothing was laid out in stone back then. She also mentioned that demon slayers were on the verge of annihilation countless of times, so perhaps the succession died out at some point. But they do have one piece of consistent knowledge about them. Once a person has the mark on them, it starts spreading to others as if they are resonating. That was how one of the swordsmen of the first breath put it, and in the present era, the first person that had the mark appear was Tanjiro Kamado, and from him, everyone who is capable were able to obtain the mark going forward. This is actually what Tokido said. He describes how it felt when he received the mark, and stated that if you are able to fulfill the conditions, then it could be possible that everyone could get a mark. In chapter 129, Tokito goes on to explain how in the previous battle he was using his breath to try and delay the poison from circulating throughout his bloodstream, but after his old memories came back to him, his emotion started riling and he got so angry that he lost complete control. His heart rate went over 200 BPM and his body became burning hot to the point where he believed that his body temperature actually went over 39 degrees. So it seems that the main condition to obtain the mark is heating the body to a high temperature and again having a fighting will. This goes back to Tanjiro obtaining his own mark. Shinobu the insect pillar was shocked on hearing this and said that would have been life threatening for the body to hit such a high temperature. 
but Tokito responded by saying that this process itself can be seen as a screening test to see if you will die or not. And that is most likely the difference between those who have the mark and those who do not. So basically guys, if you are worthy, you will survive and receive the mark. From then on, after learning how to obtain the Demon Slayer Mark, the Pillars decided to start a Demon Slayer Mark training program for everyone to obtain it. Once again guys, we are hitting spoiler territory, so be aware. But you guys got this far, so keep watching. So after this training regime, most of the pillars ended up receiving some sort of marking on them. Yes, at this point, the water pillar, the wind pillar, the love pillar, the mist pillar, and the stone pillar obtained their demon slayer marks. But the next time we learn more information about these markings is in chapter 170, when the first upper demon moon, Kokushibo, comments on Himejime, the stone pillar's mark. Kokushibo himself was a demon slayer with a mark from the Sengoku era before he turned into a demon. So he has a lot of knowledge about the marks. And once he noticed the marking on Himejime, he informed him that it's too bad that he ended up with it because even if they manifest the mark and are able to improve their power in the long run, it merely reduces their lifespan. Kokushibo goes on to say that without a specific exception, the mark ones die before they reach the age of 25. And because Himajima is past 25, him receiving the mark means that he will probably die that same night. However, our man Himajima responds with saying, it doesn't matter because the mark ones already understand that. And even if they had not been marked, as long as they were in the demon slaying corpse, living for tomorrow is never guaranteed. But more importantly, Himajima goes on to confront Kokushibu that he mentioned there was one exception of a person who lived over 25 with the mark, either alluding to the existence of the Hanafuda Samurai Demon Slayer or someone else. Either way, all in all, we learn that the 25 year old doesn't always apply as there are people who escape the fate of death. So with all that, what do we learn about Tanjiro's forehead mark? First, that it's not an injury scar, it's a birthmark. And Tanjiro's mark is special, unlike the other Demon Slayers, as it's the original one that resonates with the others, giving them access to the mark and its power. Tanjiro's mark has evolved as he has progressed within the series, starting from his first form one being activated by the heat of the hot brazier and his will to protect his brother. The second form activated with him going beyond his limits, fighting the hand demon. We also see the second form grow within his fight against powerful demons, one example being Akaza. And as his mark grows, Tanjiro becomes stronger and stronger. It is also likely that once Tanjiro masters the breath of the sun or dance of the fire god, his original demon slayer mark will appear fully across his face, similar to Kokushibo or the Hanafuda earring demon slayer. Well, I hope I explained Tanjiro's forehead mark and made things less confusing for you guys. If you lot enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe, and let us know what you want us to break down in the comment section below.